Hey folks, Brendan from Blue Light here. And if you are in the police recruitment process, or you're a serving police officer and you're looking to get to the next rank, or you're a serving police officer and you're working in a partnership setting, or you're a serving police officer and you want to go for the next role, a specialist position, this video is for you. I'm gonna introduce you here to something called the 10 people ometer you might be thinking, what on earth is that? Where's that come from? Well, as reminded of this, this is a tool I used to use as a neighborhood inspector uh, many, many moons ago. But I was reminded of the need for the 10 peopleometer uh, whilst I was running an online assessment center webinar last night, uh, course 15 of 2021. We had an awesome evening. We were looking at problem solving in a community setting. Uh, stage three of the online assessment center, unless you're aware, uh, gives you uh, some policing conundrums to deal with. You need, need to either write about them or verbalise answers to 12 questions that you're going to be asked about a community safety problem. And one of the things that we were discussing was homelessness and vulnerable people who may have uh, complex uh, addiction issues or just complex needs full stop from a variety of different angles. And some of the individuals who are actually on the course are involved in this world. Uh, one individual is from uh, drug and alcohol treatment services, and she was talking about the difficulties they have with mental health teams, because the mental health teams say that they can't make a diagnosis because of their drug and alcohol problems. The drug and alcohol people say, well, we're not sure if we can see them because we think it might be a mental health problem. And she also gave some examples of individuals who can't secure help because they don't have a home address. They don't have a home address because they're homeless uh, and all sorts of other things that when you just look at it from a distance, you take a step back, you just think, what is that all about? And this is where the 10 people ometer comes in. And it sits within the competency and values framework as well, because within the competency and values framework, it talks about challenging ways of doing things, finding more efficient ways to do things, supporting partner agencies, becoming more effective, looking at ways we can change for the better, serving the community in the best way possible. All of, all of, all of that is valid reason to use the 10 peopleometer. Now, whenever you are in a situation in a partnership setting or even in a police setting, old police setting, where you're just thinking, hang on a minute, does this not sound like the completely ridiculous thing that we're doing? Or, hang on a minute, that thing that you just described there, they can't get support because they've not got a home address, but they're homeless. As uh, Ian Hopkins, the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police, once said, we thought we were doing a good job but all we we're doing was just passing the names of people from one agency to another agency to another agency, passing the parcel and sometimes coming across, oh, they don't meet our criteria, so we can't actually support them. This is where I came up with the 10 peopleometer, and it goes like this. If you're in that situation, you just ask everyone to stop for a moment. Just Let's just stop for a moment. Let's just imagine the next 10 people that walk past this office or this police station. We're going to invite them in and we're going to line them up and we're going to say to them, this is what we're doing at the moment, or this is what we're going to propose that we're going to do, or this is the inaction we're taking. Whatever it is that you think, hang on a minute, this doesn't make sense. Imagine that you're sharing it with those 10 people. And you might be thinking, yeah, but the next 10 people, that's a bit random, isn't it? Well, yeah, if you get two more of them, they can decide on someone's guilt, whether someone's guilty of murder or not. So 10 people seems about right to me. It doesn't matter how random they are. And I, I threatened to do this once. I actually said, look, I'm just going to get them in. I'm going to go outside now and invite the next 10 people in. And we're going to actually ask this question. And it's a really simple question, folks. You just imagine that you're asking them, is what we're doing the right thing to do? Or is it ridiculous? If they say it's ridiculous and it makes no sense, then it's ridiculous and it makes no sense. If they say that's awesome, man. that's everything we expect you to be doing, then it probably is awesome. And it is everything that the community expect us to be doing. So crack on and do it. But if those 10 people would say, or the majority of them would say, 
You're doing what? Or you're not doing something? That's ridiculous. Then stop, because it is ridiculous. And we need to take a good, hard look at the way we're doing things. Now, I didn't just leave it at that. We then talked about having a shared vision. What would that shared vision for the working group be that's trying to deal with problem X or problem Y? What's their shared vision? Have they got a shared vision? And then we went on to look at ideas and techniques that you could utilise to ensure that you really understood the problems and the issues and the culture and the reasons why that other organisation had that policy. So then you could try and come to a negotiated outcome. It's like a policy of policies to ensure that you meet your shared vision. So there's a lot of things, other things we covered, a lot of other ground we covered. And I know that this stuff works because those people who've done their stage three online assessment center, when they've implemented techniques like this, the techniques that I cover, come back with scores in their 90s, even if they don't really understand community policing. And this is where I think the College of Policing fails people a little bit because they tell you in the guidance that you don't need to have any prior knowledge of community policing. Well, ask anyone who's done the assessment centre whether that's true. I did once. I asked over 100 people whether that was true and I think two of them came back and said it was. The other 98 said, no, you most definitely need some knowledge of how policing works, especially community policing and problem solving. Which is why, fortunately, that's my bag. Fortunately for you, if you've got your online assessment centre coming up, that's my bag. If you want to find out more, by the way, the links are down there to my courses and the Facebook groups, uh, all the different services I provide, uh, everything you need to excel and get an awesome mark in the next stage of your recruitment journey. And I did say there's something in this for those of you who are serving as well. So the next time you come across one of those scenarios, introduce the 10 peopleometer. Go on, be bold. It doesn't matter if you're introducing it to a sergeant or an inspector and you're a sergeant or a constable. It doesn't matter if they're one rank up. It doesn't mean to say they're not immune to doing and saying ridiculous things. Challenge ridiculous. It's part of your role. Competency and values framework says so. But more than that, I think the communities of our country expect you to challenge ridiculous, no matter where it might lead to. And trust me, I've been there. It's led to, Brendan, you don't want to be asking that question again, do you? Actually, I do. No, really, you don't. No, I do. <laughs> no, you don't. Um, we need to have a conversation after this meeting. It's led to lots of moments like that with high ranking officers as well, all the way up to chief constable. I've been quite happy challenging a chief constable in the past about ridiculous. Ridiculous was the target world that we were in. I'm not gonna give you the response. I'm not gonna tell you about the conversation because Chatham House rules. But I was quite happy to challenge the ridiculousness of target world. It got me a little bit far, <laughs> it got me about that far. It didn't get me that far, it got me about that far. But you've got to do the right thing, folks. And then you can look back on your career and think, yeah, it's part of that change. Even if it's just by a little bit. Anyway, I'll leave you with that, folks. I hope you found it of interest. The 10 peopleometer. Oh, by the way, if you're doing your assessment centre, don't say 10 peopleometer as if anyone's going to actually understand what you're talking about. You'll need to explain it as well. Because the 10 peopleometer, someone Google it. I don't even think it's a thing. It's just a Brendanism. But it's worked for me on so many occasions. It's worked for others who I've shared it with on so many occasions. Hopefully it will work for you as well. Be part of the process of getting your high mark in the recruitment process, or if you're a serving officer, just helping you to navigate ridiculousness. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye for now.